In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a data file in Excel and then how to read that data file into our commander. So what we have here is just a data file that I created. I made up some numbers. Never make up numbers on your own, but for an example, that works just fine. So first we have a participant ID, and it's important to always have a column that's the participant ID. And if you have paper copies, these numbers should match the numbers that you write on the paper copies as you collect the data. So if something is weird, if you had somebody who's 99 instead of 19, you can go back to that paper copy and figure out what's going on. So I highly encourage you to do that. And these numbers should be different for every person. So even though you have multiple people in your groups, let's say the first person has participant IDs 1 through 30, the second person should have IDs 31 through 60, so that they're all unique, and you can easily go back and find who was who. And then, so these are variable names across the top row, and then the data is the rest of what's going on. So here we have sex, just either male or female. You can just type male and female in, age, so you would just type in what they said for their age, same with ethnicity, just type it in, and then here the example I'm using is the satisfaction with life scale, which has four items. So we have different variable names for each of the items, and so we have different variable names for each of the items, so we can differentiate between those later, and then the data for each person. And this would be the number that they circle on a scale, it's a one to seven scale, so all these numbers need to be between one and seven. And it's important to put in each individual item rather than a total score so that you're able to calculate inter-item reliabilities later in terms of Chromebox Alpha. If you wanted to within Excel, if you thought it would be easier to do here than in R, although you could certainly do it in R2, you could compute an average score. So let's do SWL.AVG for average. And then we can have Excel average the four items in the scale. So we can go to formulas and then click on the little arrow next to auto sum average is the second option down. Click on that. It will automatically select the numbers next to it so it's doing what you want it to do. So go ahead and hit return. And then the easiest way to do that for all the other participants is to click on the box that you just created and then get the crosshairs over the lower right hand corner click there and just drag down as far as you want to go and what that will do is to copy that formula into all of these other cells changing what cells it refers to so here it's referring to E3 through H3 and so that's an easy way to calculate the average now once you have that this is an Excel file and it's better to save this as a CSV file or a comma delimited file. That's the easiest way to read it into our commander. So we just go to File, Save As, put it in the same folder, and now Save As Type. We want to click on the arrow. We want to go down to CSV comma delimited, and then click Save. And they'll give you this warning, some features in your workbook workbook might be lost if you save it as a CSV. You didn't do anything fancy, so are you okay? Do you want to keep using that format? You want to say yes. And now what we can do is open R and load the R Commander package. So packages, load package, go down to R Commander, double click. Okay, so here is our R Commander window. In order to read in that data set, we go to data import data and the first option is from text file clipboard or URL click on that and enter name for data set so the default is just data set but you could call this something different if you wanted to there are variable names in the file so we want to leave that checked missing data indicator so if someone left something blank if they didn't fill in their ethnicity or if they didn't circle an item in the Excel file what you could do instead of, let's say, the first person didn't do number one, you could put NA, not applicable. They missed that item. And then here we have told, we're telling R that NA indicates missing data, so it knows what that means. And then location of the data file, so we're going to have a local file system we're going to go pull it from. 
field separator, we want to change that to commas because we have a comma delimited file, so that's important. And then the decimal point character is a period. And we'll leave that as the default. Click OK. And then it brings this window open so you can point it to where your data set is located. So here's my data set. Double click. I just called it data file. It prints out the script. You don't need to worry about this if you don't want to, but it prints out the script so you can see what it did. It gives you a note down here that said the data set called data set has 10 rows and 9 columns so you know that it read it in. Another useful thing that you can do is click view data set. And now our data set is open for us here and we can see that it looks very similar to, it's the same data as in Excel, but now just as an R data file instead of an Excel data file. Something else you might want to look at, you could look at the structure of the data set. So if you type STR, which is short for structure, open parentheses, the name of the data set, which is data set with a capital D, a capital letter is important, the close parentheses, and submit that statement or command, it tells us that this data set is a data frame with 10 observations of 9 variables. Participant ID is an integer variable, which means we have the whole numbers. And these are the examples of those numbers. Sex is a factor, so it's a nominal variable with two levels, either female or male. And then the numbers over here are assigned in alphabetical order. So 1 is female and 2 is male. The age is also an integer. Those are the values we had. Ethnicity is a factor with four levels. The numbers, again, are assigned in alphabetical order. So one is African American. And then our four items on our scale are all integers. They're whole numbers. And then our average score that we created is numeric, which means it can have decimal places, which ours certainly does. So that's useful to see. The other thing that you might want to look at, if you have a large data set and you don't want to view the whole thing, you can type in head, open parenthesis, the name of the data set, close parenthesis, submit that statement. And here it prints out the first six rows of data. So we can see that the variable names are what we want them to be, and we can see what the first six rows of data look like. So that's what you need to do to set up an Excel data file, save it as a common delimited file, and then open it within R so that you can analyze your data.